Hello, I'm Doug. Hello, I'm Joan. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you. Joan, can you tell me when you were born, please, and a little bit about your life before the war? I was born in 1938, a year and a week before the outbreak of the Second World War. So I don't remember much about that first 12 months um, because I, you know, memory wasn't there at that particular time. And I was born in Runcorn in Cheshire. As you got older, what were your memories of the war? My first and earliest memory of the war, I must have been about three years old. The war had, had was well underway by that time. And because um, Runcorn was situated midway between Liverpool and Manchester, it took a lot of bombing. And I can remember obviously being woken up. It seemed like the middle of the night, but it might not have been, and being carried downstairs by my dad and taken into the air raid shelters, which were at the back of our house. There was a, a large field where they directed about five or six brick-built um, air raid shelters, which served the residents of quite a large neighbourhood of this in the area. And I can remember being zipped into what we used to call a siren suit, which was a complete outfit uh, made of some kind of wool, I expect, with a hood, and carried into wearing this siren suit. And I can also remember being given um, a Mickey Mouse gas mask, which um, I probably wore at some point, but I can remember, I can remember the smell of the Mickey Mouse gas mask. <laughs> What was a Mickey Mouse gas mask? It was almost a full gas mask. Uh, it had ears rather like Mickey Mouse and it was purposely designed for children so that they wouldn't be frightened of the, 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 old, the adult gas masks. And um, it, it was simply a gas mask which was for the children and I can remember having to carry it in my cardboard box when I went to school with my cardboard box and my gas mask over one shoulder and my um, I mean, no, uh, tin mug over the other shoulder, ready for my third of a pint of milk. Right. <laughs> Joan, do you remember much of the bombing? You were very young, but you can you remember anything about the bombing? I can't remember bombing as such. I can remember hearing sirens and hearing the all clear when it was all clear. But I can remember picking up bits of shrapnel which was left from when the bombs had fallen or when they'd done some damage, which often fell into, fell into our garden. So there must have been bombing in Runcorn because there was bombing quite heavily in Liverpool for the docks and Manchester and in Runcorn because we had the large ICI chemical works um, which were a target for the for the bombs. Mm. So shrapnel must have fallen and into the, our back garden. So I remember collecting bits of shrapnel and I thought that was wonderful. <laughs> Do you remember the rationing? I can remember having a ration book and we were only allowed to have a couple of ounces of sweets per week and taking it to the local grocers, because we didn't have supermarkets in those days, to collect our two ounces of margarine and um, probably a, two ounces of sugar that we were allowed each week. So I must have gone with my mum to buy our rations, but I do remember that was my particular ration book. <laughs> um, John, can you remember the end of the war? By the end of the war, I'd gone to live with my aunt and uncle in Lancashire, in Preston at that time. My mum was in hospital, she'd been in hospital for some, uh, quite some time and my father had been called up but then I think he must have been given compassionate leave when my mum went into hospital and he must have been demobbed very shortly at, at the end of the war as my mum was in hospital um, and that, at that time I was visiting grandparents who lived in Liverpool and, as I say, living with my aunt and uncle in, in Lancashire. Joan, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. I've enjoyed reliving some of those memories. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. <laughs>